Boye, te tupua, boye, te tafito, boye, te kahuyo ngariki, boye, tavivi kia tu mataua. Each year, a new intake of army recruits arrive to complete their basic training. They have just 16 weeks to prove they have what it takes. They'll be pushed to the limit as they transition from civilian to soldier. Kill the enemy! And not everyone will make it. Zero six twenty in the car It's the fourth week into basic training, and each morning the recruits are assigned their own personal rifle from the barracks armory. They've been issued the American-made 5.56 mm Marzal semi-automatic rifle with a 30-round magazine and optical scope. So first we put it on safety. Boom, on safety. And now we can strip it down. All we have to do is clean this. This is the bolt. Puts the round into the chamber. And most people have trouble pulling this pin out, this thing right here, because it's an ass to pull out, but that's why I agree this nail just sort of like makes it easier. The first time we got our rifles issued to us, like we got told to treat it like our baby. We have to have them on us 24-7. Even when we go to the bathroom or anything like that, we have to have them on us. Ready team, take three, get on the move, let's go. Packs on first, push your packs all the way to the back. Make sure that your weapons are dead on the ground, ready to hand your back up. That's right. Come on, we're supposed to be on the range in seven minutes. During the fourth week, the recruits learn to fire with live ammunition. They are under intense pressure to pass the Army's weapons test. OK, so the shoot they're doing now is the AWQ, which is the Annual Weapons Qualification. So it's basically a combination of all of the range shooting, and it actually is a tested, uh, scored shoot, which has a pass mark. But not all the recruits get to shoot. Some of them have to man the targets in a protective bunker, the old-fashioned way. Have you followed shot, or you just got it? I just got it. All right, sweet. Everyone stays under the mound when they start firing. Um, don't go past the flag, and don't go past lane 10. We just want to um, teach you what you need to know or what you need to apply yourself on an AWQ and then fucking move forward pretty much. Easy? Yes, cool, cool, cool. Cool. Sweet, where you going? When you bring your target up, use the fucking wall because when it starts blowing wind, all you fellas are going to let it fly around. So you say, hold it up, hold it straight and lean against the wall. Fucking hold it straight, don't do it like that. Fuck your mate can't even see it. Hold it straight and hold it flat. Sweet. Yeah, there's three things that you need to work on, right? Is that composure, right, the trigger squeeze, and where you need to sight on the targets from the different targets, right? Stand by! Targets! Hop! So just have a look now. Have a look through your sights. Um, try and find that, uh, try and find that hand. Recruit Duffy is struggling to keep up with some of the recruits. She has failed her physical training twice, and now she's in trouble on the range. That's all right. Yeah, cool. Negative. Negative. Oh, not very good. It's probably my worst one this week, but I'll get better. Recruits also have to learn how to shoot at a moving target. This involves a certain amount of skill. You tuck it up and you walk normally like a human, right? Yeah, laugh now, but when you do the crab, I'll yell at you. Wait, I can fucking see that to a straight nut sick. You get a good one, you know, it stays quite straight and static like, along the way. But uh, if you don't, then it's just kind of goes that way. Fuck, be fair to your mates and hook them up. Fuck all these down here, taller than me, and I can hold a fucking higher. I guess in terms of character building, what you don't want to call it, or what we like to call it, want to be that firm and fair, but let them know that I'm not here to be friends. Down. Good girl. Gun shots going off this side, this side, this side, and you shoot, and more gun shots going off that side. As long as everyone's putting a weapon that way and not this way or that way, it's, it's fine. <laughs> this is a bit of a panic. I think I did all right. Not doing that minus 80 points. Getting used to the guns is pretty, pretty fun. All the guys look at us like, wow, a girl carrying a gun. But 
but all of us girls can do to the same standards as the boys, so we're not lacking. A lot of people told me I couldn't do this. And hopefully keep proving them wrong until the end of the 16 weeks. Otherwise I will pretty feel pretty down. So, so is it one, two, three, or on the 19th on Taylor? Yep. And then four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. As the scores are tallied up, one recruit has broken the number one rule for a soldier and his weapon. So you know the rule there, not to leave it lying around? Yeah. As you see, yeah? Oh, so he left his rifle lying around. Uh, he's probably going to get a little bit of a corrective punishment. He'll be sweating afterwards, I know that much. He'll be breathing heavily. He'll be a bit annoyed with me. But um, he'll know after that uh, not to leave his weapon lying around. After a full day at the range, the recruits set to cleaning their weapons. A strong bond is beginning to form in the platoons. But yeah, all us girls are getting pretty close. It's probably the best part about it. We're all getting, making lifelong friends. Um, yeah. <laughs> Some recruits, though, are nursing injuries. That's precious. Like, I went to go grab it, but I missed and it, like, hit my pinky. Yeah. It's fractured now. I just feel steep because somebody else has to pick up my slack, like, one of the boys had to carry my rifle there and back. Yeah. What about health? It feels, it sucks. With the recruits only able to use their phones at the weekends, whenever a mail drop comes, it's a welcome connection to the outside world. Jenny! It's my birthday. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to have to take it off me, though. What is it? Chocolate? Yeah. <laughs> There's a lot um, held in. Thank you, by, sir. By, um, what's his name? Darling Chanel, happy 18th. I hope the platoon acknowledges your special day in some way. I am so looking forward to cuddling you on Sunday. A recruit, Talia Duffy, the separation from her girlfriend is still proving to be difficult. It's just hard, but good at the same time. And it's good getting letters. Lemo 105768, recruit Ronga wishing to speak to Sir. Come on. Uh, put your weapon down. Mm. With days up to 16 hours long, the recruits are making mistakes. In turn, they're receiving punishments. Right. So I want you to write down, I will not leave. My tall boy insecure. My tall boy. Insecure. 300 repetitions of that line to write. And that will be done by before uh, 2200 tonight. You understand? Yes, sir. So after what this like 350 times. Oh, grab, it, bro. Start again. grab another blue um blue pen and tape it together. Are you boys alright if I stay in here just doing this? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, yeah. fuck, we'll smash it. Not really a fast rider, so I need to uh, try and boost this out before the time uh, expires. It's been four weeks since the recruits have seen family and friends. Anticipation is building as visiting day approaches. We're all excited for tomorrow. Well, I don't know anybody else, but I am. Yeah, a whole bunch of my friends are coming. I told them to come around 8, because it's too early to come and see them. Watson, can I say hi to your dad? Hi, Watson's dad. I'm Watson's roomie. He's <laughs> sitting <It's a> <laughs> in the shed. Yeah. For recruit Runga, visiting day has a special importance for seeing a loved one. I have a four-year-old son at home. I'm a single mum, so I want to be able to give him everything that both parents can. And I feel like being in the army, I'll be able to do that. OK, Kakite. I want to hang up now. I'll see you tomorrow. I'm going to see you. are looking forward to getting off base, because it's sort of all we've really seen for the past four weeks. Visiting day has arrived for the recruits, but like anything in the army, there are rules. So our boundaries for today, for underground, you're going to go no further south than Taihape, no further west than Awakuni, and no further north than Waiuru military camp. No excessive PDA or face sucking in uniform. All right, some of you have your partners coming. Do not start making out with them outside the camp conference center. From all over the north and south islands of New Zealand, Family and friends have arrived. Kia ora. I'd like to offer you a very warm welcome to Waiuru. So our job is to take essentially civilians, many of whom are young people, and prepare them for further employment in the New Zealand Army. One, two, 
we're quite impressed with this lot and we care about them. And I think you will see a change in some of your loved ones today. And they will probably feel a little bit homesick because they've re-engaged with you again. So if they talk to you about the basic itself and having second thoughts, I don't know if this is for me, okay? Mothers, just say to them, I carried you for nine months. Suck it up, boy, all right? Okay? Crutes are waiting outside. They're all yours. As soon as I saw my family, I was the first to break from the ranks because I saw my sister and my brother and mum and dad walk out one by one and it got me pretty sad. Nico! Hi! Hi, Dad. Are you happy to see mum? Very proud. We've all worked hard to get him here and we're just on his journey supporting him. Oh my god, I was like, this bitch better be here. They all turned up hungover except for the driver. They were moaning about being tired, moaning about the cold, and I was just like, do you know where I've been for the last four weeks? Like, I'm tired, hungry and cold. <laughs> While the recruits reconnect with friends and loved ones, unfortunately not everyone has had a visitor. For the lucky ones, though, they have just six hours to visit the local towns. And they'll have to be back at base before sunset, otherwise they'll be facing a serious charge. Um, so I just got a call from my little brother to say that he's 20 k's away. Um, I'm pretty nervous but quite excited to see him, um, and I told him where the meeting spot was, and I think he's really excited to come. Oh, you, you, you share the food. While recruits experience the joy of reconnecting with family, for recruit Winnie Tunner, there's one special person that couldn't be there. Um, my dad passed away when I was 14. I remembered lots of the teachings my dad taught me. So when he left, it was, it was a big loss for the whole family, and it was by far the biggest tangi I've ever been to. I think the hardest part about this is that I told him when I was 13 that I wanted to join the army, and he was real proud of me. Like, for doing something that he would approve of. And I kind of wish that he could see me in my uniform. But yeah, I know he's watching anyways. But all too soon, precious time with loved ones has drawn to an end. It's now time to return to barracks before curfew. Everyone's had a pretty good time. There's a few, few tears afterwards, but it's, it's expected, you know. They see them for eight hours and then have to say goodbye, so get them straight back into it and keep them busy, and then, yeah, hopefully they just forget about the tears and we'll carry on. How's your one's fucking family day or whatever you call it? That's good. See, who's got shit? No outside food is allowed in the barracks, but starve for junk food. Most have brought something back. Two minutes, stand by, go. Who wants an Oreo? Oh, yes! Hey, seven. <laughs> stop eating! Stop eating! What's that? Chuck it in there. Let's go, hurry up. It's lunchtime for the recruits, and they've been tipped off by one of the sergeants that it's Corporal Ty's birthday. He told you it was my birthday. Why is everyone singing me happy birthday? 
Do you know when my birthday is? Do from it. Mark, done. Anyone laughing? Look up. Let's go, knees up. Point, half. Look up. Forms up. Back out here. When is my birthday? Yes, and it's not today. It seems the recruits are the victims of a practical joke. So it was a stitch up of a sentry. So yeah, we're in the shit right now. But it was worth it. But while this may seem a bit of a laugh, the intensity of their training is taking a toll on some of the recruits. We're pushed to our limits. We all think we have shin splints. But you can't complain about it because you get pulled out of basic training. Some of us are like almost throwing up. But we push ourselves through it. And luckily for Elliot Platoon, they have found a way to cope with the extreme rigours of basic training with their very own special comedy team in Corifar and Tafaiti. Yeah, we're, we call ourselves the morale lifters. We are the platoon lovers. We're the platoon lovers. If so you like, see someone in, um, in need of a, a platoon hug, we just go up and hug them. Even if they're angry. Yeah. Like, stuff is hard. And you have, like, the sure funny dudes who are kind of always raising your morale. Are you all right? You look a bit sad. Do you want me to take that rake and put it back in the store? But not everyone's enjoying their fooling around. Yeah. <laughs> Whenever he's late, one of the boys is late often, and we get fresh. It's because they talk too much. That'll be why they can't get ready because they talk too much. <laughs> like, they don't realise that you can talk afterwards, just let's just get the mahi done. At this stage of their training, each recruit is figuring out what they have to bring to the platoon. This phase is called storming, and it can be stormy, as each recruit finds their place in the pecking order. Hi, guys. So fatigues and everything need to be done by 2100. No walking in the corridor. Fatigues need to be done properly inside and outside. Yes, Corporal. Everyone's kind of always trying to be top dog, and it just doesn't go down well. It's pretty much like being with your siblings. Yeah. They aren't blood. You can just <laughs> smash them and hate them and love them. It's really weird. weird. Yeah. <laughs> then we have army brats who really think they're top dog. <laughs> oh, you do this this way, you do this that way. I know this, I know that. And we're just like, calm down, brother. Some recruits stand out for their physical, mental and emotional instability. But the strong ones can also be a problem with attitude issues. One more lap there, Tuimata. Recruit Tuimata has been marked out as not being a team player. I've had a few doubts here and there. First off, starting here, like, um, what have I got myself into? But then I guess, got to push on, eh? Hoorah! He came from a background where he was the natural leader. So he was the captain of the first 15, big, strong, dark, handsome, yada, yada, yada. You've got a massive look at me attitude. You think you're better than everyone else. And that is very much not the case. Not at three weeks, not at four weeks, not at 16 weeks. You know? So we put him up on that formally. Continue to monitor him over the next two weeks. If he continues to pull the socks up, then he stays. If he reverts back at all in the next two weeks, he's out of here. It's six o'clock, and Hinton and Patoon are up extra early. For repeatedly poor shaving and forgetting ID cards, they've been put on a punishment called flagpole. Uh, prepping up and getting our bed spaces and everything clean before we all have to uh, attend flagpole. Yeah, we've got a really limited time, so I can't talk any much, but I've really got to get cracking on. Let's go, man, in the corridor. Corridor! Recruit Tuimata is on a warning for not being a team player. He's now making the extra effort with the other recruits in his room. Roger. See if we have a better result than we did the other day. Over the past week, we've had a lot of problems with unlocked tall boys, people failing to shave, just and a lot of small uniform infractions. What's that on your on your? Oh, say, uh, <laughs> that they probably could have picked up with each other if they'd looked at each other's uniforms. I guess the point we're trying to make is a lot of the stuff that's been happening would have been avoidable if they'd been looking after each other. But uh, 
I guess it's sort of a culture of everyone just looking out for themselves. Doesn't mean we don't do flagpole though. The command move, double our side, form up and we usually form up on the parade ground. The consequence of not following army regulations means Hinton Platoon would have the pleasure of double time marching around the army depot's flagpole. We try and do a few punishments as a group. This one was for yesterday. We had two pairs unshaven in the morning and three pairs without their ID cards. So decided to throw in a group punishment, which will hopefully teach them to start looking over each other in the morning and making sure all of them have got everything they need ready for the day. What have we got with our teamwork, men? Nothing, Corporal. Yeah, yeah, fuck all. Today, the recruits are learning how to survive in the open. Everything they need has to be carried in their enormous packs. They'll be spending the whole day and night in the field. But sadly, recruit Watton won't be joining them. So today, I am leaving the camp. I'm leaving basic training at 10 o'clock, catching a ride home because I've been medically discharged from basic training. And I had been complaining about having pins and needles and getting numb, like cramps, like feelings for a few weeks. But Thursday night we went for a run and, and I got to the stage where my leg just hurt so much I pulled out. And then the big doctor came in and said, I think you might have compartment syndrome. Yeah, he said it's from um, excessive weight and exercise. And he told me that I was going to have to go home. That's quite disappointing, quite sad. I have to restart my life career again. <laughs> she will be a bit down in the dumps. She was a good soldier and she tried really hard. Um, unfortunately, it is just one of those things, but hopefully she recovers and comes back in 12 months. Ah, uh, I could eat kufu, eh? Oh, it was devastating um, to hear that we lost her. <laughs> We all feel stink that like part of our like team's gone, but we just have to crack on, I guess. A key part of the recruits' field training is learning to hide from the enemy. In today's exercise, they have to climb a hill and touch a stick at the top without being spotted by Sergeant Pennyha. So pretty much you gotta get from here up to Sergeant Pennyha without him seeing you. Oh good Sergeant! Yeah, it must be. So you so say jump over there, jump on top of that, on top of this track. So say so you can't really see you, and then you just so get we into take it. our guns as well. Oh no, nah, fuck! What do you think? <laughs> Leave them in a fucking flex, <laughs> idiot. because I've got like flax and toy toy parts, but there's none of that here. While most of the recruits are spotted, two finally manage to reach the end goal. Sergeant Penner. What? Yeah. Made it. Um, sweet, so probably we'll make our way back down and then we're going to have some lunch. Sweet. For doing so well in the exercise, Corporal Broughton has a special treat in store for his hungry recruits. Gee, I say come on. See anything else on the wish list? Hot chocolate? Yes. And powers. Can we have Kinnis soup in school? Kinnis? Oh. No fallen or self fallen Kinnis? No fallen. No fallen? So what I got is uh, corned beef with the big cow at the front, Kinnis in the shell from no fallen, powers. See, I'll, I'll work on this, trust me. <laughs> Sadly though, the only thing the recruits will be dining on tonight is army rations. It's all right. I don't know. Yeah, it's pretty gross. That's all right. When you're hungry, you just eat it. It was good. The beef and chilli was nice. Indian, bit of terrain <laughs> mixed in there, bit of dirt. I love um, being, um, being in the outdoors, like um, being out in the stars and stuff and watching the sky. Yeah, I think at times like this you appreciate New Zealand life. It's quite lucky for us to wake up um, tomorrow and see this. 
Even now it's so beautiful. Coming up next week. You will kill the enemy. What will you do? Kill, kill the enemy. enemy. I am not confessed. What are you trying to do? Kill, kill the enemy. enemy. So remember, we'll go across your face. And remember which way you go, don't go across your face and go, oh, okay. fucking back the other way. You just end up with a fucking smudge. Supporting local content so you can see more of New Zealand on air.